One of our most important clergy groups within the United Church are, of course, the chaplains with me now, Earl Klotz. Welcome to our little reporting process that we have going on here. Yeah, thank you. Tell me a bit about how you got involved in, in military chaplaincy. Uh, it's just been an evolution of my call to ministry. I started off um, in, in regular congregational ministry and, and, uh, and uh, found out what I you know, uh, what I liked and didn't like, and I came to a place in my career after 14 years of full-time ministry that I wanted to specialize. And, and uh, through a discernment process, I, I joined the regular forces. Now, so you've had the experience of congregational pa uh, ministry and now the chaplaincy. What's, what's the difference? What's the big challenge in what you're doing now? The difference is um, uh, where I used to go to church, I now take the church with me. Yeah, uh, I do uh, baptisms aboard ships. I do uh, uh, communion in mess halls and 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 uh, grief counseling wherever the people are. I take the church with me to wherever it's needed. We're living through this odd time. My perspective is odd time, where we are a country at war, but somehow I'm not sure that we all feel that as a daily reality. Um, can, can you talk about being a chaplain at a, in a time of war? Yeah, that, that's an interesting thing. Um, unless unless you're in the face of it, you don't. We don't always realize it. It. Uh, but but there's there's large conflicts in the in this world, uh, um, and and I think we need to be honest about that reality. He, uh, um, I I didn't join the forces easily because I've been a person that has always advocated for peace. East and uh, and like most good soldiers, I don't like war, or uh, so so. Well, uh, but but it is a reality, and and so what we need to do, and what I need to do as a chaplain, is bring in this spirit of peace and discernment, so that when we are faced with conflict situations which we need to address, we can do so with the right place. And I try to to. Uh, be a voice of conscience, be a, a voice of, um, or a place of reflection. So when uh, soldiers and, and, and uh, Navy personnel and Air Force personnel come to me, he, uh, they, they can discern what's right and wrong um, in the best way that they know how. Yeah. Clearly our forces, like our society, is increasingly multicultural. Mm -hmm. Is it helpful to come from a church which focuses on things like intercultural uh, faith and intercultural Worship does does that help you in your job in terms of the background you bring to the to the new Canadian forces? Absolutely, yeah. The United Church is a necessary voice in the chaplaincy of the Canadian forces. We are in the cutting edge edge, I, I believe, of of interfaith ministry. The uh, working with uh, 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 Jewish rabbis and imams, um, and and uh, Christians from all walks of life, but. Um, that's what we have as as uh, sort of formal ministers in the Canadian forces, is uh, but we also minister to to Wiccans, people of no faith, the uh, uh, native spirituality, and and we do so, oh, uh, trying to be in integrity with who we are. So as I go into the forces, I minister as a United Church chaplain, and um, uh, to my own. Uh, but I facilitate as much as I can the worship of others, encourage them and, and uh, advocate so that they have space and time and facilities to take care of their spiritual needs and, I'm, and to care for everyone.